Well, good morning, folks. This is Pappy Two Bears again, giving you a little update on what's going on with the restructuring of my sacred lodge. Today, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about the painting process that I'm working on now. As you can see, uh, obviously, I'm inside. And I'd mentioned in my last video, uh, everything that I was doing was weather dependent. And guess what? For just about the last week, it's been raining every day. And even though it's not raining today, it's still quite uh, cloudy outside. Chances of showers coming through. I certainly don't want to take this cover and lay it out on the muddy ground. Because that would be just a terrible mess. So I'd like to show you what I'm doing so far. Uh, if you uh, plan on doing something similar to this, uh, there are a few things I can let you know uh, about what you might want to do to prepare to do it. Let's take a look at what, uh, what I've got so far. As you can see, I'm starting to paint the top portion of the teepee. And if you remember the diagram I showed you before, This is going to be the pattern that I'm using, and I already explained what those uh, what those items are. Now, if you notice, I'm only using the one color that I'm painting with so far. All right, so uh, and I do recommend that you start out with your uh, with your darker color first. In this case, the black, and do all of that. Now, in in talking about that, when you're dealing with something like canvas, when it's brand new like this particular cover is, it comes from the uh, it comes from the factory uh, already uh, treated somewhat, if you will, during the manufacturing process. So it's a little stiffer than it would be after it's been aged for a little while and you've it's been you know moved around and that sort of stuff so it is a little bit easier to work with but there's a couple two or three things that you need to be aware of because a TP is generally set up outside uh, it's going to be exposed to the weather so subsequently at some point in time you may have to waterproof uh, the canvas in order to keep it from mildewing mildew for canvas is probably the greatest uh, factor in the breakdown of the fabric so if it gets wet and it's put away wet and that mildew starts the fabric will rot so generally what will happen is that uh, if a teepee has been put up it will never be put away unless it is completely dry if it has to be taken down to be moved it has to be set up immediately afterwards to make sure the air is out completely dried before you pack it away and store it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now, ultimately, it would be, it would be best, of course, to be able to lay the whole cover right out so that you can see the whole thing and work on it and get started on the project and just keep going on. Well, I've had to piecemeal mine, as you can see. And I have no space in my cellar down here. So ultimately what I have to do is I have to do a little section at a time. Wait for that section to dry. And then pull the cover. All wadded up like you can see. And then a little section at a time. So it is what it is. And uh, it's all a learning experience. Now let's talk a little bit about the paint itself that's, uh, that we're using on this. Um, if you're going to paint a teepee, it is recommended from the manufacturers of the teepee that you use 100% acrylic paint. And don't scrimp on uh, the cost of paint. Because this is going to be an exterior structure, you want something that's going to protect it from the UVs as well as the weather. So go out and buy a good, high-quality, exterior, 100% acrylic paint. Name brand is best, is what I found. And it's not necessarily cheap, but it lasts a good long time. Now, because they're made for exterior, they generally come in pretty thick. And we don't want to have the paint too thick when we're painting our cover. And the reason for that is because 
it could form a layer that uh, can peel off later on. We want something that's going to be able to move into the fabric a little bit and get a good adhesion, okay, but not be so thick that it will flake off later on. So you will have to water your paint down a little bit in order to get good flow and also to get um, a good saturation into the weave of the canvas. Now we have it easy today. We can go into a uh, a nice hardware store or a department store and you just got all these little color chips that you can pick up and look at all the color palettes and everything. Well traditionally when the Native Americans painted and colored their um, items they used natural paints and natural pigments that were made either from plant uh, materials or uh, perhaps from minerals. One of the common things that they would do is, is um, take different minerals and grind them up into a powder. Okay, some of them were, uh, the colors would develop when they were placed in a fire, for example. You know, red ochre and uh, uh, the yellow stones and things of this nature. Black, of course, uh, was primarily from either coal that was found or perhaps charcoal that was ground up. And they would mix them with... Uh, for example, like tallow and things of this nature uh, in order to make a paste or uh, uh, heat it up so that it would flow. And it, and it was these things that they would rub into the fabric or the animal skins so it would be absorbed. The colors were generally much more subdued than the real bright colors that, that you see today. But I think perhaps if the bright colors were available, they would have used them. So we're fortunate in that we have uh, a good selection and you can make it whatever you wish it to be. The second thing I would recommend is that you use a good high quality brush when you're doing these. Okay. And the reason for that is, is once again, the application of the paint. You want it to be sure that it's going to absorb the best uh, way possible so that you get a good wicking out of the bristles of the paintbrush. Now when you're dealing with uh, with painting large fabric areas like this it's a you have a big potential for creating spills okay so always make sure that um, you have made it as much idiot proof as you can in my case because I've got elbows that seem to knock over everything, okay? So I've put my paint inside of one container and placed it inside another. And I'll dip out of that container and move over to the area that I'm working on, all right? So I'm, like I say, I'm using one color at a time. When I get done with this one color on the, on the cover, then I will switch over to another color. Now, here's another thing that I found from experience. If you'll notice, I've done some, I've, I'm, I'm taking a picture right now of something that I don't recommend that you do, okay? And that is set your coffee cup next to the paint that you're dipping your paintbrush into to get paint. I don't know about you, but I have never developed a good taste for my coffee after I put my paintbrush in it, okay? So before I get started painting, I'm going to make sure that that coffee cup is gone, so I just wanted to give you an update to let you know that no, I have not stopped working because of the rains outside. I've just become a little more innovative and stubborn, if you will, and determined to keep it going, even if it's only a few inches at a time a day. And sometimes that's all it takes. If you do a few inches a day, you're making progress. The inches add up, after a while it becomes feet. And then it becomes yards. And then it becomes miles. And that's the same way in the progression of our lives. We build everything up from each second that we live. In doing this, the appreciation for me is that the end product 
will be worth all the effort and all the prayers that I put into it because I see this teepee that we're looking at now with a fire inside it glowing at night. While I'm able to ask you to come and join me at my Harmony fire and we walk a good journey together. So maybe on the next one you'll see this stretched out on the lawn. Perhaps it'll even be painted. I don't know. The journey is what it is. And I'm glad to have you along. Once again, if you've liked uh, what we're doing so far, by all means, come back for the next one. This is Pappy Two Bears doing our Earth Walk together. I thank you for journeying along with me. Blessings, all.